I want to keep pushing it. I don't think I know everything as an actor. I'm always looking, I'm always watching, I'm always picking things up, you know, but I think you're lifting the stones, man, because you're like a salmon swimming upstream, man. You know what I mean? There's always somebody right there, so you gotta keep staying at it, staying after it. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Shea Wiggum is an actor. I sat down with him in comfy chairs beside a roaring fire at the Lafayette House in the East Village of New York City to talk about the work. You land the role, you get the script. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you do to try and get into this character? Oh, uh, well, I, I think each piece that, you know, that I take on is, is different. I don't have a set way. Um, I mean, I always start, um, I stay real open and I just start with, uh, in the script, just start slowly uh, cracking the script with a guy that I have been with since Tigerland. Um, a guy named Tom Draper out in California. We started here, uh, he and I, he was under Jeff Corey, and who was Jack Nicholson's guy, all these, you know, out in Los Angeles, this guy was the acting and teacher and and he and I were in, working together and then I, I got Tigerland all the real girls and we work through everything every boardwalk script so we start there real just real open and you start to I guess you start to layer I mean I'm not great at, at, at talking about process uh, I mean I, I I mean I learned a lot from a lot of different people man I learned from from Nick Nolte, uh, I put cue cards up, like, uh, uh, with the scenes, so you know when you're shooting out of order mm -hmm. where you need to be emotionally. I learned from Anthony Hopkins working with him about relaxation and concentration. No great performance comes from gripping, mm -hmm. you know, if you, uh, in layman's terms, you know. So, I, I, I beg, borrow, and steal as much as I can from the greats, you mm -hmm. know. But yeah, you're catching me right now. We're about to go Monday, and so I'm, we're, we're we're getting pretty close with the accent in this particular piece that you're, that I'm about to do. Uh, it's New Hampshire, so I'm working with Tim Monick, the great Tim Monick mm -hmm. on New Hampshire. We're trying to really figure out what that what the accent is, how mm -hmm. much we want to go in there with mm -hmm. it, and that's another layer that you put on. Right. Uh, losing weight right now. I'm down, mm -hmm. you know, I'm down quite a bit because the characters he's not sick or dying, but he's he's tiny, small. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets he gets fucked with by John and John, these two other actors, you know, like and he just doesn't feel really, you know, he's a junkyard dog, but he's also mm -hmm. like he feels he's got a big heart. So you're just trying to find ways in and see how close to the void you like, you can touching that, you know, how close can you get to these characters in their yes. skin? Tell me what Tom Draper does for you. Like, what is his role in, in, in your process in the beginning? Yeah, well, it's impossible. What you don't want to ever be, I mean, it's impossible to, to, to what he's meant to me. Um, what you don't want to become, you can live inside the head, and you, you want to start there. You, you know, you, you want to intellectualize as you're reading through the script. And, and, but at some point, you have to go from here, the head, into the body, you know what I mean? You can't be what I call a mirror actor. You're doing it in the mirror at home. You know what I mean? This is what I'm gonna do and then they're gonna do this. And no, you have to be open. If the three of us are sitting here right now, if all of a sudden we're in the middle of this interview and I spill my coffee over, if who's we're gonna get up and clean right. it up, right? right? But maybe that's not in the script. So right. Tom and I, we start to really talk about who, who, who is he? What does he want? You know, what, what, what are his needs? Who, who am I to you? Who am mm -hmm. I to you? What do, I, what do you mean to me? Mm -hmm. What are his likes? And we just start to let those things kind of wash over us. And then we, we, start, we start putting it on its feet, mm -hmm. you know? And you kind of need him to bounce stuff off. I do, because yeah. you can't think of everything on your own. It's impossible. You know what I mean? And you, like I said, you don't want to get in there and you know, um, 
I'm about to go in with uh, with Michael Shannon for like the sixth or seventh time after this particular piece right I'm doing right now and you know you you, you get in there and you don't know what he's gonna bring mm. you know you don't you don't want to intellectualize that you want to be open to you know whatever yeah. whatever it's gonna be yeah you know so I hope that answers that it does it does tell me like the the, the whole idea that you you picture this particular character that you're working on a little bit thinner and you have this this idea and you're and you're wondering how far to go with the accent but how much of the director is involved with those decisions like is he letting you well that's interesting man uh because it's different each time um i i like to say i'm repeating myself but i've been i went on murderer's row of great directors recently yeah for like since boardwalk started and I say this, I say this humbly, man. But like, I found myself on the floor with Werner Herzog, Terrence Malick, Scorsese a couple of times, O. Russell, and then yeah. these young cats that are flowing mm -hmm. through, like Fukunaga, Jeff Nichols, Take Shelter, uh, Damien Chazelle, yeah. Adam McKay, you're like you know, and then Sam Esmail from Homecoming. Mm -hmm. So, what's interesting about this one this time is. The guy who wrote this is from New Hampshire. He wrote it about his life. You know, he wrote it about, so I have a wealth of, tr a treasure trove of, inf of information that I'm going to him on. You know, what were you thinking here? What were you thinking when you wrote the play? What were you thinking with Packy? I'm playing a guy named Packy. And Packy's just, you know, he's, he's called a, the blonde, um, John Bernthal. Hey, he's a fucking leprechaun. He's a midget. Hey, he's a dwarf, you know, ah. Hey. So we know that told me somehow he's got to be small. He doesn't feel he has problems with women. Like he's not confident. So, mm -hmm. you know. But well, Sam Esmail. I mean, when you, if you take let's just take Homecoming for example. That character for me was the toughest that I that I I for me because he's the farthest away from me. Mm -hmm. I felt so, and you have to trust. You have to figure. Out, I'm always looking for what's the way in. You know what I mean? I guess. Yeah. What's the way in? What are his? So, <laughs> so with that guy, I don't think Am I don't know if Amazon. I play a lot of tougher characters usually. You know what I mean? And I don't know that Amazon. I'd done a a real wild character for something for them, and I don't know if they necessarily saw me as Crasco. Yeah. But Esmail was like, "Nope, this is my guy." Yeah. And I told Sam, I was like, and looking back, I'm a little maybe it was a little. Bold, bold of me, but I was like, I, I have a way on it on Carrasco, you know, and uh, and it it just it's real basic, man. You start real basic. Uh, where he he works for the Department of Defense Office of the Inspector General, yeah. and he just wants to do the right thing. Yeah, and he doesn't understand. He, all I do is thumbs up, thumbs down on, with complaints. I someone files a complaint, and I and we're gonna we're gonna do this, we're gonna not do this, and in that. He gets in, a, so he's not a he's not a private dick. He's not a sleuth. He's not an he's not a he's not a cop. So it's I said it'll be really interesting to Sam to watch a guy who's just a regular guy, yeah, who just wants to do the right thing. Yeah. You'll watch that guy all day long. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. But we got to yeah. trust it. And right. Sam led me, man. He is he's a visionary. He's one of these few, you know, like Fukunaga, like Damien Chazelle. These guys are, you know, they're playing three-dimensional chess and everybody else is playing checkers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? David O. Russell. They're, they're seeing things, you know. Mm -hmm. And Sam is the same way. He's a cinephile. You know, he went to AFI. Mm -hmm. He knows his cinema. He knows Kubrick. He knows De Palma. He knows Hitchcock. He knows, yeah. you know, so. Tell me, though, what you really need from a director, these are all great directors, and they're and they've made great movies. But what do you, as your particular kind of actor, your work, what do you need from a director on a set? And I'm sure some of these great masters were great in some ways, but they didn't quite work as well as others did for mm. you. And you don't have to name names or put them in boxes, but I just want to know what you need. Mm for your particular work yeah i mean for each thing it's it's different sometimes you really lock into a character you know what i mean you don't you don't need a lot yeah and i think that's the 
That's a gift of a director to know that. You and I talked before we started, and you're like, how much to talk, how much not to? And if you, if you like something as a director, I don't, want you to, I don't want you to come in and have to feel like you have to say anything because yeah. you're trying, in, in, my home, in my opinion, you're trying not to get the actor up here. If they need to just, if you like it, that's great. Let's just stay right in there. You know what I mean? If you see something, come in, you know, and precision bomb me with a note. Boom, bang. This is, this is. What about this? Or maybe a guy like Tim Van Patten. Let's take him. Yeah. He is so in tune with his actors. He knows exactly, or, or he know, or he doesn't know, and he's okay to say that too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like, what do you think here with Eli and Boardwalk Empire? You know, because you're constantly. Ah, what, what's the tone of the scene? Where are we want to be? Where are we going? Where do we come from? And sometimes, most of the time, he's got a beautiful answer. He just slides it right in. Mm. But there are times when he's like, I don't know. Let's, we're going to find this. I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's okay. And that's too. not scary to you because he's, he, you know he's confident enough. I yeah, mean, like, he, yeah. the I don't know is not, you're not like, wait, you're the captain. Wait, wait, it's you okay know? if you know they've done their homework. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes you do have to fake it. I'm, uh, you know, you do, sometimes you do have to, you know, it depends on, you're part psychologist, I think, as well. <laughs> yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Some actors need to talk it, talk it, talk mm-hmm. it, talk it, talk it. Other actors, Gene Hackman, you know, his famous thing was uh, faster, slower, louder, softer. Mm-hmm. And I'll make the adjustment. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Other people, you know, I mean, what are you going to say to Daniel Day-Lewis that he doesn't, or, you know what I mean? You can say, this is, this is, what, uh, this is what the scene's about. Mm-hmm. This is where I, what I'm thinking. This is where I want to, you know. But what are you going to say to, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Defoe, who you've talked yeah. to, like, guys, you know, guys, he's just incredible. Ben Foster, guy, mm-hmm. these are guys that I go, and put my $10 down and go, I'm gonna watch this cat work. Sometimes you just show up, you do one scene with some people that are the star of the show or the mm-hmm. star of the movie. Mm-hmm. And, some, and these are people that you know, got to be very famous doing, doing things and some of them are good actors and some of them are just famous because they, they play everything well and, and they're, they're, they're great. And we, and we love them collectively, you know, they're not necessarily the best actors. But is there anything that has surprised you and you learned from some of these people just working in one scene? And can you tell me a time when maybe they, one of these people, latched onto you, realizing that you're, you're an actor, like you're, 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 you're a capital A actor, like they might be a little lost. Mm. Mm. Has that ever happened where they, where they look toward you? Huh. Let me see. You know. When I stop to think, like, and do an interview like this, I don't stop to think much, man. I, I just try to stay in it, stay. <laughs> but when I stop to think about some of the people that I've worked with, actor-wise, it's, and and I'll do, I'll do crazy stuff like something that just when you ask this question, it pops into my head. Uh, I went and worked with Jeff Bridges about eight months ago in one scene in Vancouver. I've always wanted to work with Bridges, right? And the director said, listen, I don't have much in this movie for you, but I'd love to see the two of you, you know, and I'm like, I'm there. Mm-hmm. I'll, I will walk there, you know what I mean, on my hands and knees. And you, as an actor, as a young actor, like these guys really speak to you, you know? And I go up there and, uh, and I have this in my head about what Bridges is going to be like. The most beautiful thing that can happen to you is when they surpass what you have, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That they're kinder than you thought, that they're or more intense than you thought in a beautiful mm-hmm. way. Or, and I get up there, and to see this guy, I don't know how old he is. I don't even know. Let's say it's 65, let's say. And he's still digging. I mean, digging hard. He's not phoning it in at all. Mm-hmm. He's playing... And he doesn't know me. He doesn't know my... I'm like, I, I, I have to do everything in my power not to stalk the guy. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't believe... I'm looking at the director all the time, just kind of... He's playing a doc. He's playing doc. I'm playing a doctor. 
pretty soon it becomes, hey, Doc, hey, Doc, you know? And it was this beautiful scene, like, mm -hmm. same with, with De Niro. He's the reason a lot of us got into the, mm -hmm. in the, into the business. You do Silver, I do Silver Linings Playbook with him. And I was so nervous, I didn't even, I don't even think I spoke to him for like the first two weeks of filming. Because I just, you know, and pretty, then finally one day, you know, I do a scene and he comes, he, he comes to me. He's like, yeah, you know, it's good. You know, and I'm like, thank you, thank you, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, it's a little more. And the next mm -hmm. day, hey, pop, hey, son, you know, it's all organic. You never, mm -hmm. you never, you never try to push anything too much. So those are the surprises to me. You know, when someone all of a sudden, you see, I mean, Bradley and I, we would be doing a scene and we caught Jennifer Lawrence early, early in her career. Like she would, you could feel she was on a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. You could feel Bradley was on a rocket mm -hmm. ship, you know? And then you have De Niro comes in and he's in the middle of this, before the take, he's, he's in there, he's in there. And you're watching and I'm, I get choked up because mm -hmm. you see this guy who still cares so deeply and he's found, so you see all of a sudden Jake Lamont, you see all these characters in him. And mm. for me, that's the, that's the gift of all this. When you first started, tell me about your approach to auditioning. And tell me how mm -hmm. that's different from right now. When you go into a room, people probably know, obviously mm -hmm. know you and yeah. they, they just might want you to read for something like tell, uh -huh. tell me the you know it's all in the doing man you have to just you have to go through the process and you become better at it I, Pacino said uh, and I always remember this uh, never be afraid to put your stuff up in front of people he said those five minutes they have to put everything down and watch you mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's just and, and in auditioning it's it's three parts it's how you enter the room, then you do the, whatever the scene is, and how you exit the room. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, I think we're, you got to remember we're all, they, they, whenever you go in, early on I think I thought, oh, they're, you always have they're against, they don't really, you know, they're not, they're against, they're, they're not really rooting, they're always rooting for you. They want to see that character come to life. You know, so you have to get past that a little bit, and then it's just in the doing, man. It's you, you, you become, you get in there and you, you know, you, you figure it out. I, I don't do a lot of it. I don't do a lot of it anymore, but I, I actually really enjoy it. There's nothing like going in mm -hmm. and hitting something, and you feel it. You feel it in the room. Mm -hmm. You feel the connection. You're bringing that writer's words to life that little bit that director's seeing you know what I mean it's a it's a it's an in, it's a it's an amazing feeling when you do hit it you know and you mm -hmm. drop in on something um, but yeah I again it's you go in and you can't you can't you can't grip you know you gotta just you can't want it too badly we're all animals at heart and everybody feels people can feel you if you want something too bad too much you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah I'd always keep that in mind take me back to when you were first doing this professionally did you have like a trajectory that you wanted to see for your career or did you just start doing and then things happen and you got this you got this you know what I mean like yeah. were you did you place yourself on a path no man I struggled mightily First, I came out of Purchase and went to SUNY Purchase, and I was under a woman named Eulalia Noble there uh, as an acting instructor, uh, and a guy named Dean Irby. And I've been a lot of, I mean, it was, it was an incredible experience, four years. I came out, I didn't have an agent. I didn't have any representation. So I started a theater company downtown, working out of the Ohio Theater and Soho Rep, putting everything on credit cards, just struggling. The struggle is where you become an artist. The struggle is where you make your friends. The struggle, people don't want to, they don't want the struggle anymore. They want to go on American Idol and become a rock star. They don't want to go like Bob Dylan down 
on down in Greenwich on the street corner are singing in the subways and singing about something. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's simplistic, but it's the same with acting. Like, oh, I'm I'm a singer. I can just become an actor, or oh, I can I can direct. No, I can't. No, I can't. It's a it's a it's a craft. I, at the, for me, it's still a craft. And you, you, you move me, move me to tears, move me to laughter, scare the shit out of me, make me feel something. You know what I mean? Without forcing me to, but make me. I want to feel something. You know. I think there's still, for me, I hold on to that. Um, I have someone take me on a manager. And I get Tigerland and Sopranos, the pilot, in the same week. Mm. And I do Tigerland. Nobody knew what the Sopranos was going to be. Mm -hmm. And serendipi serendipitously enough, I did Boardwalk, which was there, Terry and Tim's. Yeah. Yeah. So my whole thing has been, uh, I've told the people that I work with, I, I want to work with the great directors. The great directors lead to great material, lead you to great actors, mm -hmm. for me. And I'm a big fan of the 70s. I'm a huge fan of, you know, Easy Rider, Raging Bull. I'm Coppola, Lumet, you know, what Marty, all these, and how Marty and Bob worked together for seven different times. Mm -hmm. They kept funnel, you know, uh, John Casale and Coppola. You know, like, and that was my whole thing. Like, I love... You know, I'm I'm a romantic man in this. Like I love, I love that going back in with someone, and, you know, and, and building another world together. If you can do it, like David O, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Silver Linings and American Hustle. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Sorsese, uh doing Boardwalk, and then he would come down. He goes, "Listen, will you come play Captain Ted?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and it's to me, I'm a romantic. I mean, it's as good as it gets. Yeah. But no, I, I don't know where I'm at. I don't, I don't know. I'm surprised anybody ever sees my work, to be honest with you. You know, and then, and then all of a sudden, some you have a little surprise, like Boardwalk becomes critically and you know, or or or, or Homecoming. Mm -hmm. You get to work with like the great, like Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she comes ready to play. Mm -hmm. She comes. You you can't fake that performance. It's six, seven pages of intense, you know, on a daily. Mm -hmm. She comes ready to play, man, and you're sparring in there, you know what I mean, trying to figure it out, and she is a great scene partner, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bobby Cannavale's in it, Stefan James is in it, like, he's on the come right now, Stefan, and yeah. Bobby's Bobby, you know? So, yeah, but I don't know, I don't know where I'm, I hope I'm somewhere, but I don't know. <laughs> Here's another little question that you probably can't answer in that same way. <laughs> For a while there, you were cornering the market on a certain type. You're, you're like a man's man. You've got a certain voice. Mm. You know, there's probably screenwriters that were somewhere in the mid-aughts, mm. were like writing FBI guys. They were thinking of you. Mm. They didn't even know mm. that they were thinking of you. Right. Like, it was just that type of thing. You can, you can rattle off um, procedural lines that mm. doesn't sound like they're mm. written. Mm -hmm. You know, Kevin Corrigan said this beautiful thing. I think it was a borrowed line, though. It's like, uh, like some, some actors, they come in, they say, all right, what house am I building today? What, what, what house you want? You want mm. a Tudor-style house? Mm. Okay, I can do that for you. Like, they're just like journeyman crafts, mm. people like that. Like, what's the, what's the character? Let me, okay, you want this kind of thing? Mm. I got that. I can do that. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're like mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. actor. But I want to know, though, is that conscious to you? Was that ever conscious? Like, okay, the, I'm getting a lot of these roles. I'm getting called in mm -hmm. a lot on these. I'm getting, mm -hmm. I'm landing a lot of these. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not just being, my agent is sending me on a lot of these. I'm landing a lot of these. So this is my mm -hmm. thing. So now I'm going to go, and I'm, I'm going to go in the room. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, tell me, me about Let me ask, let me I don't know what it means to be a character actor versus a leading man. You know, I'm not really sure. I don't think about in terms of things like that. I, I just don't. I'm not being facetious. I just don't. I, um, I don't 
Maybe, I, I mean, I don't crave attention. That's not what gets me out of bed in the morning. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't have social media. I don't do any Instagram. I don't Twitter. I don't have Facebook. I don't do any. I don't know about all of that. What I do know is, you know, creating creating characters. John Casale was one of my favorite. Like, you know. Yeah. And I and I I will steal this from from uh, the great Mark Rylance. I heard him through another friend say this one time that. And I really believe this, like a great actor, you know, he's winning, he's winning Oscars, he's winning, you know, Rylances, and, and it, it's something, I'm going to butcher this, but he said, you know, a great actor, to me, and this is how I feel, is like a great, the greatest thief. You never know who the greatest thief is, because they never get mm -hmm. caught, right? Mm -hmm. But they're out there, and you know their work, because they're taking stuff from the Louvre, and, it's like it's like an actor like me like the biggest compliment I ever get is I mean I, I'm walking down the street all the time or in airports and people are like oh you know what I mean and yeah. it's a respect like it's yeah. so I don't you know but complex characters because they, or they don't know where they can put you and you know yeah. you'll go like sometimes I'll do things like King Kong <laughs> Kong Skull I'm like oh yeah you know yeah. I loved that movie yeah yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not. I mean, I love, I love my the intense, you know, stuff. But uh, I love that movie. You know, so I love to be able to disappear, man. Yeah. For and me. you don't have, you don't have like a conscious thing about what, like you don't need that. You don't need that side of of the business. Meaning, like the whole idea of knowing how you are seen by yeah. these people. Well, it hurts. I'm. I mean. I'm, People can answer this probably better than I can. It, I'm sure it hurts me too in the long run. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I, I right. mean, I don't know, but like, if I started doing that, yeah, if I started looking outside. Yeah. You know, I think I have good people in my life that yes, you can't be. It, it, I mean, I'm I'm 50 now. Yeah. I I have to be smart about things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When you get the love of homecoming, or you get in Vice or First Man, that you know that Gar like it's. It's, it's great, it's nice. But again, that's not what gets you out of bed in the morning, you know what I mean? What do you do to feed your actor brain when you're not working? Well, that's easy, I read, I read voraciously. Um, how, how does that help the actor brain? Well, it's pretty obvious to me, but maybe some people are like you know, that are not voracious readers don't understand what that does. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, that's just what I, I mean. To be honest with you, it's what it's what I really enjoy. Um, I mean, when I'm working on something intense, I'm not reading Dostoevsky. Do you know what I mean? But when I'm not working, I'll crack into something a little bit heavier. I read. Look, man, you know I I'm gone a lot. Uh, I don't think I've talked to my family really in the last, since I've been here, <laughs> you know, it's, that's bad, but I, I do check out. So I miss a lot, you know what I mean? To the point that my kids are sometimes like, hey, dad, you know, you know, so you, you do miss a lot. So, I, so I'll, 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 I'll give them a lot of hang time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that feeds the soul, man. You're always constantly looking at how, you know, you, 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 for me, man, I don't know how to say this. Like you're constantly lifting the stones, man, and seeing what's under what's under there. No, oh, be curious. Be curious. That what makes that's what makes a great actor. That's what makes a great artist. There's not enough curious people anymore. That's you know right. what I mean? Right. With technology, everything's right here. No one wants to go up and look uh, at a road map to figure out how to get across the United States. They just you know, the phone says turn left, turn right. You have to be curious. You have to be consciously curious. So reading, you know what I mean? Stay open as you get older because our tendency is to get a little more and you stay open, you know? So I I want to keep pushing it. I don't think I know everything as an actor. I'm always looking. I'm always watching. I'm always picking things up, you know? But I think you're lifting the stones, man, because, you know, you're like a salmon swimming upstream, man. You know what I mean? There's always somebody... Right there, so you got to keep staying at it, staying after it. I think. 
Shea Wiggum, thank you. Oh, thank you, man. So much for this. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.